pissed. Adam was him. Yeah. What about the uh, the um, the commitment thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? He was not happy. <laughs> I got a call at, like, 10 p.m. from, like, a random Maryland number, and I was like, I have no idea who this is, but I picked up, and sure enough. Well, was he pissed that night? It was the night before that he called me. He was upset that night? No, 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 no. No, I mean, uh, like, when when it got broken right. before. That's right. when he was upset. Oh, well. What are you going to do? All right, so if you guys are ready, I'm going to start us off in five, four, three, two. Hello again, and welcome to this week's edition of the BadgerBlitz.com podcast. My name is John Valdez, a staff writer for BadgerBlitz.com, and I'm joined today by John McNamara and John Gorman again. Guys, how are you doing after uh, Wisconsin's very close, and uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a a big risk to call it a controversial ending to their thir- uh, their 32 to 30 loss to Arizona State over the weekend. Uh, doing well, uh, you know, ready for uh, you know things to kind of move forward here with the start of the Big Ten season. Um, you know, as as you mentioned, uh, a difficult loss for Wisconsin. It's kind of been talked at uh, to all extents at nauseum almost about the end of the game. So. Um, I'm sure you know Gary Anderson and his group are, are pretty eager to get back on the field on Saturday, and uh, you know I'm excited to see how they bounce back from that difficult ending uh, on the road against Arizona State. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo a lot of those comments. I am both doing well and uh, eager to see how the you know ready for the Big Ten season, see how they'll uh, bounce back against Purdue. Yeah, so we're going to start off with this show. We, we will touch a little bit on Arizona State just because, uh, you know, it's their most recent game. We're going to try and avoid uh, talking about the ending of the game because, uh, you know, we, as much as we would be able to talk about this for, uh, I, I'm sure, a, a long time, we are kind of uh, time-constructed in terms of how much time we want to, uh, you know, let this, uh, this, this week's show run. So I think we're just going to keep it to talking about other things about the Arizona State game besides the besides the controversial ending. So, uh, you know, John McNamara and John Gorman, what are a few things that really stood out to you guys about, you know, the game in particular before, uh, let's say, the you know, the final 18 seconds of that game? Yeah, you know, I think you'd start with Melvin Gordon and, uh, you know, how he performed. Um, you know, I think some people might argue that he didn't get enough carries, you know, um, throughout that ball game, um, but really emerging as is a big time superstar, um, you know, with big play potential every time he touches the ball. So I mean, that's I think that's one thing to take away from it. Uh, the the second thing, and you know, it, it's been touched on a little bit, but uh, the weather at Arizona State and how well Wisconsin seemed to be conditioned, you you didn't see guys, you know, going down and being cramped up and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, I thought the conditioning really showed and with Wisconsin how well they, they, they conditioned for that game. Um, you know, obviously a, a difficult ending. Um, in, in the way that, you know, Gary Anderson uh, handled himself after that game and throughout the week, uh, you know, being bombarded with questions about that, I think, um, you know, it, it's pretty easy to pick up uh, what Gary Anderson's all about and, you know, his character from, from the first time you get to hear him talk or get to meet him. So, um, you know, the, the way that he handled himself, this entire week and after that game, I, I think really kind of speaks to his character and the type of person that Wisconsin has. So, um, you know, outside of, uh, you know, that ending that's been talked about uh, at length, I think there were some positives to take away from that game. Um, I, I think Arizona State's a very good team. I, I think they'll do well this year. That's a difficult place to play. Um, and for Wisconsin to uh, to put themselves in a position to win late in the game with the, with the field goal, I, you know, I don't know how much you can take away and feel good about yourselves after a loss, but um, I, I think there are positives to take away from that game. Yeah, uh, a couple other things I wanted to bring up. I thought the defense as a whole played very well. Still, on, over the course of the whole season, they've only allowed uh, four rushes of 10 yards or more, which is a pretty astounding stat, considering they played now three full games. Um, and I know I know Arizona State, I believe, rushed for four touchdowns on the ground, but they're all from the short variety. Um and they had a very good offense, you know. Um, they, they could pass the ball a lot. 
and uh, they pass the ball effectively. And despite you know the back shoulder throws kind of bit Wisconsin a number of times, uh, I thought the secondary was a little hard done by the penalties, the pass interference calls. Um, and I think they, they they did a pretty good job overall. I mean, it was definitely an area um, that was a supposed weakness, and I don't think it was a weakness. I think it's a young group, um, and it showed that it's a group that has a lot of upside. Uh, on the flip side of the ball, the passing game still remains a pretty pretty sizable concern. Um, I think I don't think Stave was was very sound for a lot of the games. There were a lot of balls batted down, um, a few missed throws, and Arizona State kind of knew. Um, to throw a lot of pressure on him and he'd get rattled, and that's kind of what happened. So I think that's something to, to look at going forward because I think Stave has the ability. Um, right now I think it might be more of the, you know, mentally just uh, making a quick read, making a throw, stuff like that. Yeah, and just going back to the, the defensive secondary, I mean, I think people were kind of uh, concerned or shaken up by, you know, the, the pass interference uh, penalties that were called and, you know, those long gains that Arizona State was able to get. But, you know, the thing that I was pointing out on Twitter during the game is that, you know, that, that throw in particular, that back shoulder pass, especially in man-on-man uh, coverage, that is one of the hardest things to defend. Uh, as a as a cornerback, as a defensive back in general, and so you know, I'm I'm willing to to kind of not not completely exonerate because you know uh, the 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 Badgers, I think you know when they're we're do, they're doing it over and over again, you you know you have to know that it's coming and you know try and find a way to you know to to prevent Arizona State from picking up all those all those extra yards with that. So, but you know, uh, kind of like what you guys said, I thought the defense actually played you know pretty well against a good offense. The run defense was very sound. Uh, I thought uh, Bo Allen at nose guard was uh, well, he was very strong right at the point of attack. And you know, for the, for the most part, uh, the Arizona State. It seemed like they they knew that they were not going to be able to uh, to beat Wisconsin on the ground. They were going to have to go to the air, and you know it's a credit to their quarterback and their wide receivers who struggled with some drops uh, earlier on in the game. It's it's a credit to them that they were able to you know kind of pick up their game and uh, and make those throws uh, when it mattered. To, you know in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, but I, I certainly don't think that you know this is this is a sign that Wisconsin's defense is, is is you know worse than people were expecting it to be or anything like that. And then on offense, you know, yeah, I I, I was still very impressed with Melvin Gordon. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's hard not to be impressed when he uh, he puts up numbers like that and looks so you know so powerful you know when he's uh, running through the holes or or things like that. But you know, the, the thing that I just posted on the site right now is that you know, despite Gordon's um, success this season, I mean, he has a, he has a ridiculous yards per carry average right now. Uh, despite all of that, the Badgers are still pretty committed to having, uh, you know, a, a rotation between him and White, uh, mostly because uh, they're about even in the coaching staff's perspective in terms of running between the tackles. And you know, White's big bonus is that he's older. He's also a better pass blocker. So as much as as much as Gordon's impressive, I st- you know, I, I I wouldn't expect them to shake up the running back rotation anytime soon. Yeah, I'd probably agree. I, I think you're going to see a lot of the same at, against Purdue. Um, you know, I don't, you're not going to come away and you know see Melvin Gordon touch the ball, you know, 25 or 30 times this game. I think they have a pretty, pretty sound or pretty set game plan that that they'll roll out against Purdue. I, I don't think you'll see anything drastic change. So um, I do think that you know there's a lot of guys on that team that are eager to get back out on the field, and uh, you know with the Big Ten season coming, I think there's there's going to be a lot of emotion coming out there after after a game like Arizona State. And, um, you know, Purdue, um, you know, they struggled out of the get-go. Um, but, you know, they, they played Notre Dame pretty tough um, in their game this past week. So, uh, you know, Big Ten season starting is kind of a fresh start for, for all the teams out there as they head into conference play. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Wisconsin comes out after that tough loss. Yeah, uh it, it definitely will be interesting to see. I, I don't really know um, what to think about this Purdue team right now because, as you said, they really did. They played Notre Dame tough. Um, it was at home, but you know they only lost by seven. But if you go back to the first week of the season, I, I watched a bit of their game against Cincinnati, and they just they got absolutely dismantled in every way possible. It was, it was really a rough showing for them. Um, and I imagine you know Gary Anderson has Wisconsin really. Uh, rip roaring, ready to go. Um, focus all their, you know, angry energy, angst, whatever you want to call it. 
um, towards the field, and I, I think Purdue's probably going to be in for a rough Saturday. Yeah, and I think um, an interesting thing about Purdue is, you know, the or at least an underrated storyline is that, you know, the Badgers actually have some pretty good tape to watch of them uh, so far, just because, uh, you know, Purdue had to go up against Notre Dame, which also runs a 3-4 defense. And, you know, um, of the teams that uh, Purdue is going to face through the season and, or Wisconsin is going to face, you know, the 3-4 is a little little more rare than it is in other parts of the country, like out in the Pac-12 or something like that. And so I think it's kind of a benefit for them that they get to see, you know, a, a very recent game of, of uh that shows how Purdue was going to try to attack, you know, an odd front. And so I, I think that's a kind of an underrated storyline for this week. So we'll see how their defense responds and, and plays against an offense that has really struggled uh, so far. You know, they're, uh, they're making a switch to a pro-style offense after, you know, Purdue's been known as a, a throw-the-ball-first, kind of spread-it-out team for the last, you know, I don't even know how many years. It's been a long time. And so, you know, I think uh, one of the biggest reasons Purdue has struggled so far this year is that they have so many many uh, players that were recruited to run a different type of offense, and they just weren't as well equipped to make such a drastic shift, you know, kind of unlike how the Badgers were uniquely well prepared to run a 3-4 for this year, you know, despite having run a 4-3 for so many years before. Yeah, you know, and the, another thing about Purdue, you know, there's, there's a few guys to, uh, to keep an eye on on that team. Um, you know, one that's been written about is uh, Justin Sins. Uh, he's the in-state kid. He he played uh, at Edgar, I believe. Uh, you know, a really uh, a really good program. You know, year in and year out, high school program, and uh, he seems to be doing well at Purdue. He's a guy that you know Wisconsin didn't uh, didn't recruit all that much out of high school, and he he winds up at Purdue, and and he's doing pretty well. Um, and another guy too is is Bruce Gaston in the middle. I remember covering his covering his recruitment. Um, he had Wisconsin in his top group. He ended up picking Purdue, and you know he, he's probably one of the better defensive linemen in the Big Ten. Um, so you know, two guys with some Wisconsin connections there. Um, we know with Justin Sins and Bruce Gaston to keep an eye on on Saturday. Uh, yeah, one other thing I'm going to be watching from the Wisconsin perspective. Some news just broke uh, a little while before this. It looks like Kenzel Doe posted on his Twitter that he's not going to be playing. Um, so I'll be interested to see you know what Wisconsin does there, both. In terms of slot wide receiver and uh, return man, because I I got to imagine they they want to ease the burden on Jared Aberderis instead of uh, adding more to his plate. So you know it, it's been a position that's been talked about a lot, but I wonder if people are going to step up there, and this is going to be their chance Saturday. Yeah, the uh, especially the the punt return situation is interesting, just because uh, the Badgers have a a very well established option at punt return in Jared Aberderis, but you know, with him being really your only dependable wide receiver, you know, the guy, the one guy you know you can uh, count on, the guy that uh, they, you know, they, they know what he is, to, to put him back there on punt returns has to make uh, Coach Anderson and the rest of the Badger coaching staff kind of nervous because, you know, I mean, like, it's special teams. People get hurt on special teams. It's, it's an extra snap that he's on the field for. I mean, it, you just never know what's going to happen. But then, obviously, the, the reward side of that is that Aberderis has been a very effective punt returner in his career. So we'll see if, if the Badgers do uh, elect to put him back there or maybe they'll uh, stick somebody else that they think can uh, handle the role um, you know, not maybe not quite as well, but you know, it's it's a, a less of a risky play to put them back there. Yeah, uh, it's you kind of roll the dice with with Aberderis out there. He he certainly gives you a, a big play threat um, and someone who you you you're pretty positive he's going to catch the ball consistently and um, you know make the right play. But uh, I'm sure Gary Anderson loses sleep over that. Uh, you know, with with him in the backfield there. Um, you know, having your top wide receiver there. So um, I, I'd be interested to see if they work a guy like uh, like Corey Clement in there, you know, in, in the kick game or in the return game as well um, to try to get him some more touches. You know, he's obviously shown that, um, you know, he's a very capable back. You know, he's, he's scored a few touchdowns in the first two games. He got some carries against Arizona State. So, um, you know, maybe he gets some care – or I'm not sorry, some more time on special teams – um, a guy like Jordan Frederick, I know, has fielded kicks. Um, I wonder, you know, they they got a few options back there behind uh, Kenzel Doe, who's who's going to be out, and then Jared Aberderis as well. Yeah, if yeah. I can just interject quick, uh, the the one big reason that I think 
the Badgers will probably put Aberderis back there now that uh, John kind of sparked my memory, is that, you know, they've had some trouble uh, fielding the ball over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, they, they had the one turnover against Arizona State where they kind of muffed the recovery. And uh, if there's one thing Aberderis does, I mean, like it gives you a bit of peace of mind that he's at least going to, you know, he, he's probably the most likely candidate to be able to field that ball cleanly. So, you know, if it comes down to it, I would, I would imagine that's going to be a pretty significant factor in, uh, you know, when Gary Anderson makes his decision about that. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I don't know what the weather forecast is like, but uh, it was raining cats and dogs, from what I hear. I'm, I'm in New York, but, you know, supposedly it was <laughs> raining rather heavily in Madison today, and if, if the weather keeps up like that, you're going to want um, ball security is definitely going to be at a premium, so you want sure hands back there. Okay, so I think we've uh, we, well we've recapped a little bit about Arizona State, talked about Purdue. So now it's probably about uh, a good time to move into some recruiting news. Obviously, you know this isn't uh, their game against Northwestern, but the Badgers actually have a pretty significant week in terms of uh, bringing in some prospects that they have a good shot with, or you know some some highly touted guys that they they'd like to increase their standing with. So uh, John Mack and John Gorman, I mean, uh, of these guys that are going to come in and visit, uh, you know. Who do you think they who do you think they need to impress the most? Uh, I mean, I guess I just what are you expecting to see out of these uh, official visits this weekend? Well, you know, it it's always good with that two thirty kickoff time. Um, you know that that always seems to uh, amp things up for for the official visitors. You know, getting the chance to see Camp Randall when uh, things are really clicking there. Uh, you know, you, you, the game kind of carries on to the night, and you know that's kind of a that's a pretty special atmosphere. You know, one of the better atmospheres. Um, you know, at least in the Big Ten, you know, people talk about it throughout the country. I, you know, I, I certainly think the staff, um, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, uh, certainly appreciates those those two thirty kickoffs or you know even those six o'clock, seven o'clock kickoffs. So um, you know, Purdue, this, this game will give you that. Um, they'll they'll have a pretty decorated list of guys there. You know, the headliner is is probably Jalen Brown, the wide receiver out of Arizona. Um, I know the staff is. Has told him before that he's, uh, you know, their number one target at wide receiver. I think Jamil Kamara has been told the same thing. Um, you know, so th those two guys might be one A and one B uh, in terms of, you know, Wisconsin's top targets at wide receiver. But uh, Jalen Brown's a guy who's got some Wisconsin ties. Uh, he visited in the summer, and uh, you know that really vaulted, you know, Wisconsin into his top group. I think had he not visited this summer, Wisconsin wouldn't have made. Um, you know, that initial cut form, which I believe was, you know, seven or eight schools. Um, you know, now, right now, Wisconsin, you know, appears to be one of the top schools um, for him right now. I, you know, a lot of the talk is that Vanderbilt is, is his top school right now. But, you know, getting him on campus for an official visit is certainly big for Wisconsin. Um, and he, he's, a, he's a huge target for them moving forward. Uh, Lubern Figaro, um, you know, a, a guy out of Boston who could play a number of different positions, um, he's got Wisconsin in his top five. Uh, Michigan State seems to be the other team that, you know, battling Wisconsin for his services. And that's the same high school that Wisconsin pulled Jakari Washington out of uh, late, in the late in the process with Bill Bush uh, handling that recruitment. Uh, DJ Jillens is, is supposed to be there um, as well, the quarterback out of Florida, the four-star kid who Wisconsin secured um, early, you know, uh, earlier in the process. You know, he's a guy that you, you, you have to imagine will be in Jalen Brown's ear. Uh, quite a bit throughout the day and, you know, into Sunday as well and hanging out Saturday night. And, uh, you know, I think that will be a good chance for you to see what, um, you know, having a committed quarterback can do for potential recruits, you know, be it wide receiver, tight end, running back, um, you know, potential other offensive recruits now that you have that, that kind of centerpiece there in, uh, in Gillian's all kind of wrapped up. Uh, then Madre London, um, you know, the running back from St. Thomas Aquinas, same high school as James White. I would imagine that uh, you know James White will will most likely uh, you know be a, a key part of his visit or or his official host uh, while he's in town. Uh, Wisconsin's looking to you know pair someone up with uh, Taiwan Deal in this class, and Madre London certainly someone that uh, is pretty high up on their board, along with uh, Chris James and a few other guys. So. Um, you know, London, he, he looks like he, he'll definitely be leaving Florida, and he, he'll most likely wind up in the Big Ten. You know, Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Nebraska are all, all pretty big contenders for him. And then uh, Uriah Liatu, um, I hope I didn't pronounce his name incorrectly. Uh, he, he's coming out from California. He's a guy that's, 
that, that that's more of that three four guy who fits that three four defense that Wisconsin wants to run. Uh, you know, he's not looking at a ton of offers like some of these other guys, but Colorado's up there for him, and Utah and Washington State as well. So, um, you know, he he'll be a guy that he, he's kind of lightly recruited, but he seems to be a pretty good fit for what the staff wants to do on the defensive side of the ball moving forward. And, uh, you know, with a pretty solid visit, I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, be a guy to, to keep it an eye out for as far as pulling the trigger after his official visit. Yeah, you, yeah you, I, I don't really know what to add to that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got, a little, I got a little carried away there. Just, it was good. I liked it. You were on a roll. You're dropping the knowledge. I couldn't stop myself there. So, um, you know, we, we've been talking about, um, you know, the October 12th date is obviously very, very big for Wisconsin with a lot of headliners there. But, um, you know, this, this this group is pretty big. You know, if, if they can make up some ground on a guy like Jalen Brown, um, you know, he's a guy I think could come back uh, and make an impact right away at a school of his choice. You know, he, he plans on graduating early. Um, you know, he was a little nicked up at the Rivals 100 camp down in Chicago, but uh, you know, he, he certainly belongs as one of the top, you know, players in the country in that 2014 class. Um, offers from all over the country. Um, he's got his niche kind of kind of whittled down a little bit. Like I said before, I think Vanderbilt might be the leader right now. Um, but getting the guy on campus, um, you know, anything could happen. He's got those family ties as well. So um, I think a strong, a strong official visit, you know, if Wisconsin can show him what he's looking for. Uh, can definitely, you know, put Wisconsin as one of his legit strong contenders moving forward. And then Madre Lund is another guy to, to kind of keep an eye on as well. Um, I, I think Nebraska and Michigan State might be a little bit out front for him, but, you know, that, that St. Thomas Aquinas connection, um, you know, with guys like Des Southward, James White, Connor O'Neill, um, you would imagine they'll be in, in his year. And Wisconsin is absolutely looking for another running back in this class. I could see them taking three if they could get the right guys in place. So, um, you know, it's certainly a big recruiting weekend for Wisconsin for that first Big Ten game of the season. Yeah, and you know it's a, a big uh, recruiting weekend when uh, the Badgers actually picked up a, a new commitment in, uh, over the, you know, in the, the previous week in uh, Chris Jones, uh, wide receiver from DeMatha, same high school as uh, running back Taiwan Deal. So, uh, guys, what do you think of this commitment? What does it mean for uh, Wisconsin's uh, 2014 signing class? I think it's I think it's a great get for Wisconsin. Um, I was able to watch Jones play um, against Godby a little bit. Um, it was one of their games broadcast on ESPNU, um, and you know I was impressed. I think he he's got good size. He's very smooth. Um, he's he you know Gary Anderson talked all the time about wanting big plays in the pass game, and I think he's someone who who can do that. Um, I think he can stretch the field a bit. He isn't a burner, but I think he can get deep. Um, and, and, and like, uh, you know, a lot of the things we said with Deal kind of apply here in that DeMatho's a, a great program. Um, it's one that you really want to get a pipeline into. Um, you know, the, the Mid-Atlantic is, is a region that the Badgers have been exploring more and more recently, so uh, getting a foothold there is, is really good. It also sounds like Chris Beatty did a, a fantastic job with his recruitment. Um, Jones said that, that Beatty was on him more than a bunch of other guys. Um, sounds like Marilyn may have been a little fed up with him, and uh, they're only took him, taking one receiver, and they may have cooled on him a little bit. And they, you know, they didn't like how he was a little noncommittal. So um, that left Wisconsin right there in the driver's seat, and and he pulled the trigger. And I think it's a really strong get. Yeah, with with a school like Dematha, they'll they're going to sign no less than it looks like ten uh, ten D one guys out of their their senior class and. You know they're they're pretty loaded year in and year out, and you talk about you know creating those pipelines, and was you know Wisconsin wants to make some inroads on the East Coast, and uh, you know I can't think of a better place than Dematha. You know they were on a few other guys from Dematha. Uh, you know one of their offensive linemen, Brock Rubel, um, and then Cameron Phillips as well. Um, you know a wide receiver um, from Dematha, and and their quarterback uh, actually camped at Wisconsin as well this summer. He, I don't know that he's a necessarily a high major kid, but I um, you know, that, that's certainly a program that Wisconsin's going to target moving forward. And, you know, if you're able to hang on to both Deal and uh, Chris Jones and sign them in February, um, I think that's great for, for, this, for this program moving forward to, to, to make some inroads, on, you know, not only on the East Coast but at a powerhouse like, uh, 
like the math. Uh, so, um, you know, Chris Jones is that, is that first part at, at, at wide receiver. Um, I could see Wisconsin taking three wide receivers as well. You know, Jalen Brown's going to be on campus this weekend. Like we talked about, uh, Krenwick Sanders are, already took his official visit to Wisconsin, and, you know, the Badgers are, are talked about to be his leader. Um, you know, they, they sit very high with him when I talked to his, uh, his head coach after that visit. And then, you know, you got, you got guys like Kenrick Young and Kadeem Goldburn, um, Emmanuel Beal, um, you know, there, there are a few others as well um, that Wisconsin's sitting pretty well with. So, um, you know, they, they got one piece in place. Obviously, they'd love to have Jalen Brown. They'd love to have a guy like Jamil Kamara. Um, but they certainly do have some options at that wide receiver position moving forward. Sure. And then the Badger, in addition to that commitment, the Badgers are also, uh, or at least they seem to be, uh, in the running for a couple other guys in uh, Chris James and uh, Jalen Embry, who uh, have Wisconsin in their top groups. So, um, you know, John Mack and John Gomer, what do you think of these guys uh, seemingly being uh, pretty high in the Badgers and having it uh, narrowed down pretty far in terms of their decision-making process? Yeah, uh, you know, Chris James is a guy who seems to be, you know, the ideal fit, you know, to pair with Taiwan Deal. You know, that, uh, you know, thunder and lightning combination, however you want to word it, you know, Deal's the big bruising back, and, you know, Chris James seems to be the, uh, the guy who's a little bit more versatile, who's, a, you know, a, a speed back, um, can hit the edge, stuff like that. Uh, he's got a pretty neat YouTube video out there where he... Uh, He's jumping over a bunch of mats and doing a bunch of stuff that normal people can't do. So that might be worth a, a look on YouTube. Uh, he seems to be in pretty good shape uh, from that video. So um, I, I, was, I guess I was a little surprised that things dipped off between him and Wisconsin. Um, but then, you know, Thomas Hammett gave him a call right away on September 1st. And, um, you know, the, the things seem to be, you know, kind of at full steam with, with him. And Wisconsin now, um, you know, Wisconsin and Pittsburgh, we have an article up on the site right now, are the top two teams for him. He certainly hasn't ruled out the other schools that are, that are in contention for him. Um, so Chris James is certainly someone to keep an eye on, and things maybe opened up a little bit with Chris James, you know, with Quadri Olison giving his verbal commitment to Pittsburgh. He canceled his official visit to Wisconsin uh, in order to, you know, not I guess not in order to, but, you know, he canceled his visit and then, you know, quickly verbal to Pittsburgh. Uh, a few days later, so um, you know that that probably opened up a spot for Chris James and and some other guys that they're looking at. Um, Jalen Embry is a guy that they had on campus for uh, for summer camp. Uh, he earned an offer there. I still think there's some things that uh, Jalen needs to clear up. Um, you know, I think Wisconsin's still waiting on some test scores, but it seems to be Wisconsin and Iowa for him, and he's a guy who could play a number of different positions: uh, safety, wide receiver. Uh, his best fit might be. At, at wide receiver, I think that's where Wisconsin likes him. But you know, he's the guy that they're going to recruit as an athlete. Um, and then, you know, I would imagine if, if everything kind of squares away with Wisconsin, that he's 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 Wisconsin's you know Wisconsin's his leader right now. I think if things all kind of work out, um, that that he'll give Wisconsin his verbal after he takes his official visits, uh, which have not yet been set. Yeah, I mean, you touched on just about all of it again. I think em Embry's definitely an interesting case in that, as you said, he can. Um, he is extremely versatile, so if you add him, and then even if you miss out on all your big, you know, wide receiver targets, he's someone you can maybe start out at wide receiver um, when he gets on campus and then go from there. But even if you, you know, even if the Badgers are able to land a commitment from, say, Jalen Brown or Krenwick Sanders or someone else, maybe they move Embry to the defensive side of the ball uh, to start out with because he certainly has ability to play multiple positions, and I think... Um, that's definitely a major perk to adding him to your class. He's also, um, he goes to, um, you know, much like Taiwan Deal and DeMatha, um, Jalen Embry goes to Martin Luther King in Detroit, um, which is another very solid school uh, football-wise. The Badgers have already offered, actually, Tyreek Thompson, um, kind of a safety outside linebacker uh, class in the 2015 class, who goes to that same high school. So um, a lot of, Maybe random things um, put together make Embry a very appealing uh, potential recruit for the Badgers. Sure. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, is uh, is Chris James scheduled to visit the Badgers the same weekend? Uh, you know that that Northwestern weekend when uh, Joe Mixon and every other you know, like recruiting headliner is going to be on campus. Yeah, that's that's when he's scheduled his uh, his official visit for. 
Um, you know, that's going to be the kind of blowout weekend for Wisconsin. That you know, we there's a lot of official visitors who are going to be there, um, and I would imagine there's going to be a boatload of 2015 kids there as well. Um, so you know, that's that's every year there's kind of a highlighted game where you know they they really turn it up on the recruiting front. Um, but like you mentioned, you know, Joe Mixon will be there. Um, you know, Chris James will be there, uh, Damian Mama, and the list kind of goes on and on and on. So, um, you know, to get our Joe Mixon plug, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he re just tonight, you know, uh, Mike Farrell for Rivals.com just, just reported that he, he canceled his Florida official visit. Um, you know, that I guess that bodes well for the other teams in the mix. It, it, the more and more, you know, that, this, that his recruitment drags on, the more and more it sounds like he'll stay close to California. Um, you know, we were talking before we before we went on here that Cal might be the top pick right now, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he jumped on, uh, you know, UCLA this weekend and tried to get an official visit there. It sounds like he wants to stay close to the home, um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's still a little ways to go in his recruitment right now, and Wisconsin will obviously get him on campus and, and get a chance to make its pitch to him. But, the, you know, the more and more his recruitment drags on, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, Cal could be the front runner with you know with UCLA kind of picking up some steam late. Uh, I always thought he would wind up at Oklahoma, you know, with those Adrian Peterson comparisons to him. Um, but you know, the more and more it sounds right now, the more it sounds like Cal uh, could be his spot. And you know, maybe UCLA pushing on late. But you know, anything could happen once you get a guy on campus. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you uh, you hit our Joe Mixon quota of one for every podcast. That's that's <laughs> nice. That we can keep that trend going, and I, I don't really have anything else to add to this. But I just read recently that Cal surprisingly is in the top ten uh, in terms of NFL players and, and what college they came from. I did not see that coming personally. Yeah, I mean they they've had a decent uh, coaching staff, or at least they did, you know, previously. You know, Sonny Dykes is still kind of uh, untested at Cal. I mean, I'll be interested to see. Yeah, you know, let, let's say it is Cal. I mean, like I think that's. Interesting, just because of the offense that uh, Coach Dykes likes to run there. But you know, I mean, like if it's if it's close to home, it's close to home, and you know, home state schools always seem to have uh, a pretty high pull for a lot of kids that go through the uh, the recruiting process. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that. Um, you know, it's you can never really fault a kid. Um, you know, sometimes fans, you know. Uh, always go crazy if, if they don't choose their school or their respective school. But you can't fault the kid for wanting to stay in state and, and stay home to play for his in-state school. Um, you know, obviously California gives you a few different options to stay in state, you know, <laughs> unlike Wisconsin. But uh, you can't fault the kid to, to be able to play, uh, you know, in front of his friends and family and stuff like that. So I think there's a ways to go, but, you know, it seems to be trending towards Cal. And, you know, they, that team has certainly picked up quite a bit of steam um, you know, as the summer's kind of weighing down. Sure. So, uh, unless you guys have anything else to add before we sign off for this week, uh, I think that should pretty much do it for us uh, for this week's edition of the BadgerBlitz.com podcast. Uh, you know, obviously the Badgers have their game against Purdue coming up. Uh, we'll be at the game doing our normal coverage, and then uh, we'll also be uh, or BadgerBlitz.com, so me and then our photographer Dan Sanger will be at the Ohio State game, uh, not this weekend but next weekend, so that should be an exciting thing for uh for us to be able to get a lot of uh, good content up onto the site. So uh, make sure that you're following all of us on Twitter. I'm at uh, John Veldheis, J-O-H-N-V-E-L-D-H-U-I-S. Our publisher, John McNamara, is at McNamara Rivals, and then John Gorman is at J-O-N underscore Gorman. Uh, and then don't forget, if you like the show, you uh, download every week. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the show, leave us a review on iTunes, uh, send us any uh, ideas or... Uh, tips, suggestions you might have to any of our emails or over Twitter. And uh, once again, just thanks for listening to the BadgerBlitz.com podcast, and we'll talk to you next week.